Uh, we've got Peter McGuigan with us today, Chairman. Um, Peter, thanks for joining us. Uh, I suppose it's quite timely talking to you uh, as we come to the end of uh, another season in the Football League. Uh, ten seasons now. Obviously, I'll come to the football uh, a little bit later on. We'll start, um, we, obviously, we had a, a forum a couple of months ago, uh, and yourself and a, and a few of the board sat there saying investors coming in. Uh, and then obviously a few weeks later, <laughs> the club's for sale. So I'll start with that question. Um, did the investment never appear or was that always the plan? Or? It was always a plan. Um, and we, we've just debated it for a few months as to whether to go public. And we thought it was in the best interest. Let's go public uh, and see what interest we get. And, you know, we've had a, a, a good, good interest uh, in the club, both from international and from... Uh, uh, UK-based uh, consortiums, um, and it does take time. Um, you know, we're in a process. Um, we're still hopeful that by the end of May uh, there should be a positive outcome. It may go into the middle of June, but uh, we'll see. But we're making every effort to try and get it into the end of May. Um, but realising that, we still then have to plan for next year, yeah. irrespective of whether there's a sale or not. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think everyone wants the sale to happen, thinking there's going to be huge amount of money pumped into the, the playing budget um, but if there's no sale then we've also got to plan for next year and that's what we're doing. So you've cut your coffee accordingly so just to sort of recap the, the, you were hopeful that the investors coming in did that manifest itself as we don't want to invest we want to take the club over or was it you just thinking it's probably time for me to step back or? I, th I think it's yeah I mean I think it's probably this week I've got 15 years or 16 years as chairman I've uh, been here 21 years. I think you know the time is there now. I think everything's in place for somebody to come in and take it to the next level. Um, and it's very important to me that somebody that comes in is going to invest in the infrastructure of the club and also invest uh, on the field you know, with an objective of still trying to get to League One. So for the follow-on for question from that, obviously, is do you feel like, um, you just said, your, your time on the board and time as chairman, you must look back on it with a fair amount of pride. This is ten years in the football league. Do you think, um, you know, from your personal point of view, is it is it time for you as a person to sort of take that step back and let somebody else take the reins, or was it just the fact that was it better for the club? Um, I think it's better for both, really. Um, you know, it's uh, twenty one years on a board, fifteen years as chairman is a lot, um, and I think particularly in the lower league, it's a very very tough role. Um, and I think it's now right um, for somebody else to come in, um, whether it be a company or an individual uh, consortium, uh, and take Morecambe Football Club to the next level. I think we're at a level where currently we can't do an awful lot more because it's going to need you know, the, the investment, not huge investment, but investment into the office block, the hotel, and, and on the field. Um, and I, I think we'll get somebody in um, by the end of May. Um, but as I say, they've got to be prepared to invest on the infrastructure and in the club. It's not a matter of just me taking the money and, and uh, running. And if, so, if they wish me to be involved in any way, shape or form, maybe they don't, maybe they do, yeah, I'm open to, to discuss. So by the way you're talking there, there's, there's obviously the club itself has got specific plans to take it forward both on and off the field and you mentioned uh, the plans for the hotel and the office block etc which obviously the office block will be on the, the Berlin Wall side yeah. as it's known etc. That, those are all they're not sort of pie in the sky they're all plans that are yeah they're, they're all there are real we, we have you know almost the plans ready to submit uh, for planning approval um, you know and I think I said at the AGM last year that just on football alone uh, Morgan Football Club probably wouldn't exist although having said that the uh, the new television deal that the Premier League have done and some football league um, increases in television that the guaranteed revenue next year will increase you know, quite substantially. Um, but I've always said, that's football. You need to have income 12 months a year outside of football. And I think what we have here is the opportunity to build the office block and the hotel and probably a dormitory just at the side there um, that gives the profitability to the club and gives it a long-standing future. So looking at the, like I say, 15 years as chairman, we touched on it just before, the 10 years in the Football League, do you, do you look back on it with a certain amount of pride, thinking that when you came and became involved when we were still in the conference and we were sort of part-time, did you expect us to be where we are now? I think uh, I, I went out, I think again it was a fans forum with Jim Harvey and said that the ambition was to get to Football League and people sort of 
looks, you know, Morecambe will never get to football league. Um, you know, and everybody talks about the great times at Christie Park. You know, I can remember some bloody awful times at Christie Park, to say, to be honest. Um, but it had to move on. Um, it couldn't. We couldn't have stayed there, or we could have stayed there, but I think would have been operating in a, a league, you know, two or three divisions below uh, conference or um, <laughs> whatever it's called now. Um, so, yeah. So you know, I think uh, you know we've moved, but. Um, yeah, very proud of what we've achieved. I think the, the win at Wembley was a, a great time for everyone, uh, for the the town as well. Um, and I really do think, with the proper with the the right investor in here, that there is a capability of taking it to League One. So that leads on quite nicely to: to Have you achieved everything that you wanted? No, um, the achievement was really to get to football league um, and to create a financially viable football club for the future. That that bit we're in the process of doing. So assuming we do that, can I look back on it? I think I can. Um, because I think it's been a very tough ride, um, you know, the last two, three years. Um, you know, the league's getting harder and harder. There's some big teams in there. Um, you know, am I happy that we're still in the football league after ten years? Uh, you know, you can argue that yes, that's a great achievement. Uh, Portsmouth played Plymouth last week and they got 18,000 supporters. We played them two weeks prior to that here and we got 2,000. That's what we're competing with. Whether we like it or not, that's what we're competing with. Um, and we're probably in the bottom two, bottom three in terms of attendance. The other flip of the coin is, well, we've no ambition. You know, I've been 10 years in this league. Where are we going? Um, so it depends which side of the fence you want to sit. I sit in the, the first one to say, I actually think it's been a hell of an achievement to keep Morecambe Football Club in the Football League for 10 years. I think that's a fantastic achievement. The The ambition now comes in moving the club on to a new owner capable of putting money in and taking it to the next level. So again, um, next question. You seem pretty confident that there are people out there that you've been talking to. Uh, just for obviously, you know, obviously the press will watch this, but the fans are the main watchers of this. Um, you're confident this could happen over the summer? Um, confident, you know, you can't give guarantees. No. Uh, I'm confident um, that there will be a change. There is uh, enough interest. Th th there's for a, for a team as Morecambe, um, there's a, there's a lot of interest. Um, is that because we're in the football league? You think? Is it, would it be harder if we were in the conference? Oh yeah, I mean, I, if it was in the conference, I'm not so sure you'd be. We wouldn't be anywhere where we are here, and that's why it's important that the club stays in in the football league. Yeah. But you are confident that there is. There is something. Gonna, I don't want to push you here, but there's something going to happen. Over, hopefully, something happens. Yeah, you've just got to watch the words, you know, because yeah. otherwise it'll come out. He said this and that. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, we're aiming. Uh, the objective is to get somebody else in on the criteria that I've mentioned before. So, following on from that, given the um, given the worst case scenario where nothing happens, uh, and obviously you're still committed to being here. So let's talk about um, the situation that's happened this season and obviously the situation that manifests itself next season without extra investment. Because obviously your thoughts on this season, obviously it's been very difficult, particularly since Christmas. Um, you know, we've had uh, obviously losing Peter Murphy fairly early and then getting back and losing him again. Uh, it was going to be a big loss for us. But um, Jim's relied a lot on the youth this season. Uh, a lot of people are encouraging him to do so, and and now that he's done it, they're, they're criticising him. So he's getting it from all angles. What are your thought? What are your thoughts on this thing? I think it's probably the same as you said. I think you know up to the end of uh, December, we were a few points away from the playoff, um, playing some great footballs, getting some great results. Um, I do think the Dagenham result had a huge effect uh, in the cup. Um, two 0 up, we lost four two. Um, I think that was a massive, massive blow for the club. Um, Probably, I was talking to Jim about it yesterday, probably to the, such an extent they did affect some of the players uh, more than we thought. Um, because to get through to the second round and then get a third round with whoever, whether it was Everton, um, was a big, big chance for us to, to move forward. And that, that was a real body blow. Um, and then the, the matches that were postponed because of the weather, as I said at the fans forum, you know that cost us a huge amount of money. Yeah, huge we nearly had nearly three months of that hunger. Yeah, so. and you know we... If we'd have played Mansfield on Boxing Day, we'd have got probably just over three thousand. We played them on the Tuesday night, and I think we got eleven hundred something. You know, that has a huge effect on finances. So, you know, we've had to work with that. You know, we'd love to have said to Jim, go and bring in 
two or three players in January, but uh, we couldn't. Um, you know, when you just wiped out a whole over a hundred thousand pound of cash, it's very difficult to do what you want to do. So, um, but since then it's been you know roller coaster. Um, Every has their own opinion of, uh, you know, we can't defend, but we can score goals. Uh, it's simple, all you've got to do is strengthen defence. Um, and I think, you know, everybody has their own opinion. Um, at Accrington last week, I said to Jim after the match, you know, if we played like that every week, I think we'd be in the top seven. And then we go to Cambridge and, you know, if you play like that, you'll be in Ryman somewhere. Um, but that's following the football club. So it's been good to begin with, really frustrating since. Um, you know, and we're spending time, quite a lot of time together with Jim, looking for next year. It, you know, assuming the sale doesn't go ahead, yes. uh, looking for next year and what can we do. Um, we're, we're looking at the budget. We've got a board meeting week on Tuesday where we'll look at the budget and tell Jim this is what we can do for next year. So, personally, your highs and lows from the time. Obviously, you mentioned the high has got to be one of them, got to be Wembley, obviously, hasn't it? Uh, but there have been significant highs, obviously good cup runs, and particularly when we got into the football league, getting good run and winning at Wolves, etc. What are your personal highlights in your time? I think you've you've said them um, without a doubt. Ruin that, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> without a doubt, the the Wembley um, was was uh, one hell of an achievement. Um, you know, you sit back and think about it now, and uh, you still sort of can't believe it as to, you know. Morecambe going to Wembley and, and, and winning. So that, without a doubt, that's the, the one. I think also staying in the Football League after that, because I'm not sure many people expected us to stay in the Football League for two seasons. You know, we're a new club, we're a small club, we don't know Football League, um, but we did, we stayed there. And to do 10 years, I actually think the 10 years is a hell of a result. Um, probably quite a number of people who think, no, oh, it's not a great result because there's no ambition. Where's your ambition to get to League One? Um, but it took us a long time to get the football league. I think, I think, from a personal, you know, point of view, most of the fans appreciate that there have been plenty of teams that we've played in the football league who are now in the conference, and despite having gates two or three times ours, can't get out of the conference. So I think there are a lot of people that do understand where you're coming from because obviously there are Grimsby, Wrexham, Lincoln getting bigger crowds than twice, three times our crowds, and still can't get out of the conference. Yeah, I think if we were in that league. With the, the gates we're getting at the moment, we'd be in the, the bottom third. Um, you know, the, the gates we get tend to, to be for the uh, Vanarama North. Um, you know, you've still got some big clubs in there. So I think um, with that backdrop, you know, people will say, well, the reason the crowds aren't going up is because of the football that's being played. Um, but I can remember we beat Crawley here 6 0. I think it went top of the league, or, yeah. and, you know, we got 2,000. Um, yeah. I think it's got to be sustained, and that's where you're looking at a new owner coming in. Capable of putting, not throwing huge amounts of money at it because I don't think it needs that, um, but certainly sprucing it up and uh, trying to get more fans through the door. So, for me, I, I interested in what you said there. Um, you said obviously, you know, it might not be a complete withdrawal for you because if the new people came in and said they wanted you to stay around, you'd be happy to do that, so you'd still be involved. Uh, if if that's what they want and it's the right partner, which I would hope it would be, then you know that's something we can discuss. You know, I've got. Uh, you know, 21 years experience with the club, six, 15, 16 as chairman. Um, and you know, for somebody to come in and just pick the reins up, uh, maybe simple, maybe I've done it wrong, then they can quickly get up to League One. Um, but you know, I'm open um, and we'll, we'll see. So it's not really the end for you, it's just more of a step back? Um, if somebody comes in and they've got their own uh, management team and chief exec and uh, chairman and they don't want me to be involved, then I won't be involved. Uh, so it's it's still it's still open for discussion. Obviously, if there's no uh, no sale for whatever reason, then I'd still be here. Okay. Um, for better, for worse. Yeah. Um, we got your highs. What what what's been your lows? What's been the difficult times for you here at, at both at Christie and the Globe? I think I think the last six months probably for the reasons I've I've just outlined. Um, uh, you know, we, we lost at Dover last year, which was a bit of a body blow. But I, I, I really go back to that game this year at Dagenham uh, here. Um, and then, of course, the 2-1 defeat after that um, recently. But, you know, when, when things aren't going as well, you always look at the bad side. You know, and I've always said to, to Jim that, you know, when you're winning, everybody's behind you. Every fan in here is behind you when you're winning. I'm there when you're losing. Uh, because that's when you need the support, because people just turn and, you know, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, and it's a game of opinions. Um, you know, put out a young 
back four and goalkeeper on Tuesday night. Um, did it work? No. Um, if you hadn't have done it and would have lost, it probably got the same flag. So there's always opinions in the in this game and with the club. But I do think the last six months have been tough. I think that you, you can overreact when it's it's tough. Um, but you know I've always supported Jim when it's tough and when the, when he's plain sailing, ever is his friend. So moving on, moving on with the positive. Obviously, we we've spoken about ne uh, next season, um, but there could be change. There might not be. Um, but obviously, um, it's a fairly important time for um, the staff behind the scene because obviously season tickets are, are coming out on Monday, aren't yeah. they? So, mm -hmm. um, that we rely quite heavily on, on season ticket sales to get us over the summer. So it's quite important that you know uh, we're quite positive about the looks at next season. And I think you know you've said as much as you possibly can about that. Um, there are myriad of offers coming out <laughs> to encourage people to come. Um, I think you call it, is it the early bird, they call it? Sorry, that's that's right. Um, uh, and obviously if you buy a season ticket you can add three juniors and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I'll point people towards the website for that, um, uh, morecomefc.com, uh, on the webpage. Uh, but thanks for talking to us. Um, if there's any more news, or um, if there is a change over the summer, obviously we'd like to talk to you again and and see how things are going. Uh, for the people who do buy season tickets, you get five, first 500 get free ships players, so they get to see this interview, which is more better than If they know what it is, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, not like, we're, bizarrely, you know, we're, we're trying to grow an audience. Yeah. <laughs> but I think season tickets is interesting, you know, as you rightly say, we don't have no income uh, June, July, um, and it's very, very important for us to, to, to maximise sales of season tickets. Um, and people can quote, well, such and such a club's cheaper than us, but when you actually look at the overall package we give, I don't think there's anybody to touch us. Um, you know, as I say, it's all on the website, but uh, it's not just all about the cost of a ticket; it's what comes with it. And I think, you know, I think we're very, very fair uh, in in our pricing. Yeah, and if you go to the website, they'll say there's plenty, there is plenty of add-ons and plenty of incentives. Yeah. Isn't mm -hmm. it? So yeah. Thanks for talking to us. Okay. Thank you.